How's it going, everybody? Blaine here for Bridge 4 Games, and we are back with another Top Cut analysis here for Series 10 uh, Pokemon. So, as you guys can see, uh, this is from the Neem Letter Tour. Now, this is actually run by um, Nemesis, who is Javier Valdez, a very well-known uh, Chile-based Pokemon player. And he ran this on the uh, Victory Station uh, earlier this past week, and he had about 124-ish players for it. So, obviously, you know, it's a decent sample size, and... As you can see at a quick glance, it certainly represents a little bit of a changing, um, you know, dynamic as far as what we're tending to see in these events. So up until now, it's really been, you know, with the two Poke Bros events that we have, it's really been a lot of, um, you know, Zacian and Xerneas dominating in terms of numbers. And we are seeing that somewhat here, but it's also getting a new rival, which we're going to touch on. Real quick, everybody, if you like this kind of content, please make sure that you like the video and consider subscribing to the channel to join our amazing Pokemon community. We have videos going up like this every single day, so you don't want to miss it. Now that we got that all out of the way, let's go ahead and start with the analysis. So first up here, we have Boa, and Boa is using a Calyrex Shadow Team. Instead of, you know, in DD to bring the Psychic Terrain and Redirect, he is using Tapu Lele. Now, we have seen this before. Um, obviously it's a bit of a gamble because you get the fairy coverage, but on the other hand, you do potentially lose getting your terrain correct because Tapu Lele is one of the faster terrain setters, meaning it'll usually lose the terrain wars. So it's a bit of a trade-off there, but we do see it being brought with Rillaboom and Incineroar. Obviously that's not too, um, unusual. That's pretty standard as we know, but what's really amazing is he's rounding off the team with the age old combo. Whimsicott Terrakion. He's going for a beat-up Rock Slide. And you know what? This makes a lot of sense. Without Max in the format, not only is things like Terrakion able to take hits better, particularly things like Max Geysers, which are really, really common, but it's also able to actually do more damage with that plus four Rock Slide. Because before, even if it took a plus four, or if it, you know, dealt out a plus four Rock Slide to an opposing Pokemon, there was a slim, albeit, you know, still reasonable chance that that Pokemon could survive and then just KO it. So now, you know, without Max in the format, it certainly is a lot more reasonable to assume that, you know, a plus four Rock Slide should KO most Pokemon that don't resist it. So a very interesting team here. And, uh, you know, we're going to go ahead and move to the next one. So, all right. As we go here to Bakamono, if I said that wrong, I'm sorry. Um, but we have another individual using a um, <laughs> Calyrex Shadow. This time with Ndidi. Um, <clears throat> and he also has Volcarona, Milotic, uh, Hitmontop, and of course, Ferrothorn. Now, I ironically enough in this matchup, I'm willing to bet a lot of money that the Cherokee and Whimsicott was actually pretty good. Um, so, if he's able to get off a Tailwind, right? There's not a whole lot Bakemono can do about that. <laughs> and then... You know, Boa can just go ahead and just start dropping huge moves on him. And um, a lot of his mons are not that bulky. Like, Volcarona is four times weak to rock. And, like, one of the reasons it's been shining so much, aside from the fact that it checks Zacian, aside from the fact that it helps all the setup mons in this format, Volcarona doesn't have to deal with max rock falls anymore. So that's one of the reasons that's able to really survive and become this really bulky mon. Um, but when it's taking big old rock slide, it's not doing all that good. <laughs> Um, so, you know, and the fact that Terrakian is weak to fighting, um, uh, or sorry, um, Ferrothorn is weak to fighting, I really see that this happened to be a really weird, you know, finals matchup where that beat-up strategy was probably really good. Um, anyways, um, yeah, Milotic, we don't really know any of the spreads or teams here, but it's very interesting to see Milotic being used, um... Especially with all the Rillaboom in the format. I, I can see the value of it because there's a lot of Intimidate, so you can get competitive going pretty well. And, you know, if it has a way, maybe like a Hondu Berry, to survive the grass hits, it could be a very seriously strong Pokemon and start throwing out Ice Beams or Icy Winds or what have you. Um, I think Ferrothorn is a pretty bold choice because we actually have a usage chart we're going to be showing at the end of this um, analysis that shows kind of all the Mons used in all three of these events that we've covered so far. And Incineroar is uh, real high. Like, it's, I think it's second in usage. So bringing something that's that weak to Incineroar is a um, is a bold choice, but albeit, you know, obviously it did well for him. He still got second. 
Um, so now we're going to move on to three here. And, you know, the interesting thing about the theme, the third team here by uh, Bagon, Mr. Mr. Beyblade, I don't know what his name is here, but this is basically a Series 8 team that uh, apparently has been cannibalized into a Series 10 team. Um, and the reason I know this, I actually used this team in one of the Players' Cup events. Um, and, and what you do, effectively, you have a Sun Core with Torkoal and Venusaur. And then you also have, like, Grimmsnarl to potentially, you know, trick, like, Lagging Tails or stuff like that to upset Speed Tears. But you also have Mimikyu and Calyrex. And what these do, they both provide Trick Room options, and Mimikyu has Shadow Snake for a weakness policy on Calyrex Ice. And then I'm not really sure exactly what the um, Zapdos is doing on there. If I had to guess, I would assume it's really just twofold to, you know, really deal with Volcarona because I could see that being a pretty major issue for this team. And, you know, having that flying option is, is really good. And also I can see it being an anti-intimidate option because if you get Trick Room up, you don't want to have, you know, a bunch of Intimidates coming down and, you know, stopping your Calyrex. That's not fun. So... You know, shoutouts to Bagon for using this team because it's very, very interesting. Um, I liked it a lot on paper, and I really thought it was very uh, potentially strong. It just didn't quite pan out for me. Um, but, you know, he was able to get third in this fairly large um, Series 10 event. So, you know, shoutouts to him. That's great. All right, uh, moving on to number four here. We have Ferrigno. Uh, I wonder if it's the Hulk, but I didn't know he was into VGC. That's cool. <laughs> Uh, but we have uh, Xerneas, Regilecki, Rillaboom, Driftblim, Ditto, and Incineroar. Now, this is very interesting um, because... Okay, so let, let's take these in order. So Driftblim is, is pretty interesting because, as we know from my High Roller Draft League matches, um, <laughs> Driftblim is great with seeds. The, the, the boosting defense or special defense is unbelievably strong, and that's really, really cool. Um, so what I'm going to be guessing... I'm going to guess Driftblim was one of his answers to Zacian. And the reason why is it's going to get a defense boost when he uses Grassy Seed, and then it will naturally outspeed Zacian. It can also use Tailwind, so all of his mons can outspeed Zacian. And it also has Strength Sap. So neither of Zacian's moves are going to do all that much damage to a plus one defense boosted um, Driftblim. So if you're able to consistently get out Strength Saps as well, that Zacian is going to get neutered really quickly. Um, and I, I don't really know what to say about this Ditto. Um, so Ditto always copies what's directly across from it. So you have to make sure you're being very mindful of where your mon is relative to whatever you want to copy. Um, you know, <clears throat> Ditto has always been, been one of these like meme things that everybody wants to try and use. Um, I, I really don't know what exactly he was trying to do with this. I have to assume he was going to steal other, like, Xerneas's and get the uh, Geomancy boosts, and then if he has a Scarf, presumably he does, um, it would be, you know, the top dog around. He also could be copying Zacian's. That's certainly an interesting option because if he can deal with their Zacian and get a Zacian himself, that's insane. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all I know about, you know, what he was doing with that Ditto. You know, again, the Rillaboom and Cinderor Regilecki are all real standard. Um, but yeah, it's certainly some interesting mons there. All right, moving on to Anubis, uh, the Egyptian god of death himself. Um, we see that he's using Zacian, Meowstic Male, Rillaboom, Milotic, Arcanine, and Porygon 2. All right, so Arcanine over Incineroar is very interesting. So it doesn't have fake out, right? But it does still have Intimidate and is a Fire Mon, so it can still check um, Xerneas the same way. It's interesting because the difference is Arcanine now, not being Dark-type like Incineroar, is not weak to Sacred Sword or Close Combat from Zacian. So that's, if I had to guess, that's probably a reason why he chose that. Um, other than that, there's not a ton of reasons that really speak out to me as far as why you would do that. Um, Porygon 2, obviously a fine option. He wants to really undo Trick Room, it looks like, more than set it. Um, you know, as we talked about with Milotic, it's, it's fine. You know, I, I personally am not a big fan of Milotic, but, um, you know, with all the Intimidate running around, especially the fact that you don't want your Xerneas being intimidated, 
that makes a lot of sense because you want to get those competitive boosts off to counteract yourself being intimidated to make sure that you don't lose too much ground and you can still pick up KOs. Um, Real Boom again, pretty standard. But the Meowstic Male, that is the Prankster one. Um, it's really, really interesting. We don't know exactly what it was doing. Um, but we do know Meowstic has a lot of really interesting moves. Um, I was actually looking at a Meowstic myself, um, which I'm going to actually pull up Meowstic's move spread real quick. Oh, yeah. So when we look at his moves, um, you know, he's got Fake Out, obviously, which is great. He has screens. Uh, let's see. He's got Sucker Punch, which is interesting. Not really all that great, but it also has Yawn, which is cool. Uh, it has Ally Switch. It has Charm. All of these are Prankster, by the way, which is pretty crazy. It has Fake Tears, Helping Hand, Imprison. Uh, it also has, I believe, Skill Swap. So, you know, I don't really know exactly what he was doing with that, but certainly you can Skill Swap with things like Arcanine and continually drop your opponents, which is really, really cool. Um... So, you know, there's just a lot of options. And also, if he is using Skill Swap, it's able to re reset the uh, grassy terrain also. Um, but yeah, I think he probably was using, you know, perhaps Charm uh, and maybe just some other miscellaneous, you know, pranks or shenanigans. It doesn't get Tailwind, uh, so obviously it's not something that was in play, but it does get things like T-Waves. So there were just a lot of options for that um, Meowstic to use. And, you know, it's really interesting that we're seeing it you know, show up on a top cut team. All right, guys, and moving on to team number six here, we have Playmaker. Now, Playmaker, you know, he's not reinventing the wheel here, but, you know, congrats to him still on his top cut. Uh, we're not trying to take away from that in any way. We're just being, you know, honest. The team is using a lot of standard players that we're seeing. Um, and there's, no, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, that's part of what a developing meta is. Um, but he's got Xerneas with its brand new best friend, Volcarona, obviously to help with redirection support and to take all those wonderful moves from Zacian so very well. And it's coming with Regilecki, Rillaboom, Urshifu. We don't know which one, unfortunately, but Urshifu. And Hitmontop. Now, Hitmontop is an interesting choice. Um, so on the one hand, it's not weak to Sacred Sword the way, uh, you know, Incineroar is. And it's similar to Incineroar in that they both have Fake Out and they both have Intimidate. But Hitmontop is considerably more weak to both... Calyrex Shadow, and also to Xerneas. So, you know, I mean, it's certainly a judgment call. Um, he may have Wide Guard on that thing or some other tools that Incineroar maybe doesn't bring that he wanted to have. So, you know, certainly that's what we're seeing. We're seeing more than one instance of Hitmon Top here, which is interesting. Um, obviously, Wolf Click would be very proud to use that at Worlds in 2016. But, um, yeah, you know, Hitmon Top's always been a, a Pokemon that I liked a lot, even back since Gen 2. So I'm, I'm really happy to see it getting some Top Guts here. Um, now we have T TC McKees. Um, I almost, I almost assuredly butchered that. So apologies in advance. Um, he's another person using a Calyrex shadow team here with Regilecki, Rillaboom, Urshifu, and of course, um, Zapdos, Galar. But interestingly enough, he also brought Whimsicott. Now that actually makes a lot of sense too, because Whimsicott is very good at getting up Tailwind to help deal with opposing um, Calyrex Shadows. It's very much worth noting that he doesn't have a Psychic Terrain Setter here. So he may not necessarily be going for the Expanding Force, or maybe he figures if he sees, you know, maybe he figures he has enough firepower without Expanding Force. And if he sees an opposing Pokemon or an opposing team using Calyrex Shadow, he's just going to outspeed him with, you know, Whimsicott and get the KOs that way. I mean, obviously, he is in 7th here, an event that seems to have been filled with uh, Calyrex Shadow and Xerneas, so obviously he knows what he's doing. Yeah, and, and the only terrain that Whimsicott can set uh, is Misty Terrain, which isn't really going to be something he's going to be doing here. So, yeah, I'm assuming that really his plan was to just not really use Expanding Force and just use Astro Barrage, which, let's be fair, is perfectly fine, and that Whimsicott could have Helping Hand too, so... Or Fake Tears even, you know, both of which work amazingly well, so... Yeah, you know, it's interesting to see that paired up because we haven't seen Whimsicott paired up with Calyrex too much. And, you know, in the top team from Boa there, it, it appears to really be more of a beat-up Mon than a, you know, helping Calyrex type Mon, especially when it had the Tapu Lele there. Um, but, you know, again, uh, shout-out to TC McKees. If we do get these team breakdowns, we are going to post them on the channel here. Um, and then last up, we have our 8th place guy, uh, Demarok. Uh, and he is using, of course, double, whoa, double redirection here. Okay, this guy, 
This guy did not want Xerneas to be touched at all. He wanted to keep Xerneas safe and sound. Because he's using Xerneas, Regilecki, Volcarona, and Amoongus, Mothra, and Mega Mushroom here to prevent Xerneas from taking any hits. In, in our uh, Academy video, the professor did say that Xerneas does not want to take hits. And uh, Demarok here certainly listened because Xerneas isn't taking any hits. Um, and then he's rounding this team off with Landorus, uh, Therian, and Incineroar double intimidate to cover up for uh, to, to cover up for Xerneas not getting a defense boost from Geomancy. So, I mean, th this team is about as all in on Xerneas as you can possibly be. This dude was like, he woke up one day and was like, Xerneas needs to outspeed everything. It needs to have, you know, the ability to take all the physical hits. Go Xerneas. And, you know, he just ran with that. And, uh, you know, we obviously we don't have team spreads, so I could be, you know, perhaps oversimplifying things. But based on these, this selection of mods, that certainly seems like what he wanted to do. And, you know, shouts to him. We, we have seen Xerneas doing so well. And, you know, it's very reasonable that he, he may have just said, you know, Xerneas is, is my win con. I am going to, to use it to kick as many heads in as possible. And uh, if that was his plan, congrats, because it worked for you because you got top cut. So, all right, that was the top eight from the Neem Ladder Tour here. Now, as I said, we do have usage stats that we have put together. So I'm going to flip over to that now. Okay, so as you guys can see here, I have a Google Doc with all the usage for each of these mons in all of the events that we have seen so far. So we do have the two Poke Bros events and then the event uh, from today that we covered. And this is a recap of all the appearances of those mons. So out of the three events in the Top Cut teams, Rillaboom has appeared 18 times. Now, that is pretty remarkable because that means that Rillaboom has been effectively on 75% of all teams that we've seen. That usage stat blows most usage stats out of the water. Um, you know, it really speaks to what this format is. Um, and the fact that Rillaboom is going to be a mod that you're going to see a lot of going forward. So, you know, prepare for that. Make sure you have an answer for Rillaboom. Make sure you expect to see it because you're going to. Uh, right behind Rillaboom at 15 is Incineroar. Now, even now, we, you know, we always say Incineroar is everywhere. You know, I've had people ask me what the, you know, most powerful mon is in VGC or what the most used mon in VGC is and without thinking you always say it's got to be Incineroar because it's always seen so much use because of everything it can do and it really speaks volumes to the fact that Incineroar is three behind Rillaboom you know it still has a ton of usage but it's still less than Rillaboom which is pretty crazy um but yeah 15 so still very respectable obviously guys this isn't a surprise we, we're seeing Incineroar used you know all the time so that's pretty simple um, next up, we have Earth Urshifu. Now, this is a bit of a you know messed up statistic because we don't have the team spreads, so we don't know which Urshifu is which. So this number is a little bit padded, unfortunately. Uh, but we have seen eleven instances of Urshifu, both forms combined, showing up on teams. So does this mean the Urshifu is like really amazing? And the answer is yes, especially considering the fact that Calyrex Shadow is around. Um, Dark Urshifu can deal with that thing so easily that a lot of people are very interested in gravitating towards it. And additionally, you know, Water Urshifu is another thing to consider because it can handle a lot of things that show up as well. I mean, there's a lot of random Firemons in the format and, you know, Landorus as well. And it can handle both of those very well. So it really kind of depends on what you want to do and what your team looks like. Next up, we have Regilecki. Obviously, this is not a surprise. We're not going to spend a lot of time talking about this. Regilecki is bonkersly good. Um... Volcarona right behind that, which is pretty amazing, given that it went from zero play, like, at all, to now being, what, fifth in the overall usage, which is pretty amazing. But, I mean, I, I do I do admit that it probably has a little bit of new toy syndrome, you know, because everybody's like, I can use Volcarona now, Mothra, Kaiju, ah! But, you know, it is still a premier redirector because it does have Rage Powder, it does have a lot of synergy with multiple items, including Citrus Berry and Grassy Seed. Um, and, it, you know, it can be run offensively if you want to do that. It's, it's not typically as good. Um, but, you know, it, it, it can be done. Um, and then, you know, obviously Xerneas, not a big surprise here. Calyrex Shadow and Zacian. Xerneas coming in with eight. The other two coming in with six. Um, and Landorus Therian, Whimsicott. And Galar Zapdos seems high to me, but again... 
you know, flying fighting may be appealing in this format, especially the Defiant being really, really interesting. Um, so I did want to just show real quick the Restricteds. Um, so out of these three events, we are seeing a very, very clear trend to what mods people are picking. So Xerneas has showed up eight times out of 24 teams. So a third of the time on the ladder, you're probably going to be experiencing Xerneas teams, roughly based on this math. It's not exactly... Uh, it doesn't always translate through, but, you know, it is certainly here at least showing up on a third of all the teams we've encountered. Um, there's also Calyrex Shadow and Zacian tied with six each, which really isn't that much of a surprise. They're both amazing. You have a lot of tools to, you know, work with them both. So I, I don't think anybody is like, you know, shocked at the fact that these are the two and three. And then we have the leftovers, you know, Calyrex, Ice and Ho'o each have one. The thing I've been finding amazing is that, you know, Kyogre is so low. I mean, we, we've we never... I've been in VGC for, for a minute or two here. You know, I've been around for a while. I started playing VGC back in black and white. Um, not not admittedly as competitively as I do now, but still. I, I don't remember any restricted format where Kyogre was as limited as it is now. And, you know, I think there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, obviously, the presence of Rillaboom and Regilecki being so high. Again, if we go back real quick sheet one you know they are literally number one and number four you know both of those mons give Kyogre a really hard time and you know things aren't much better with Calyrex Shadow either because it can just do so much damage you know um so it's really interesting to see that you know the titan of the sea has kind of fallen and um it really speaks to you know series 10 being a much more original meta than we've kind of encountered in the past so that's what we have for you guys this is our you know these are the analysis of the teams we've seen so far um shouts to everybody that won in the uh, neem tour because that event was really cool um you know obviously i didn't get a chance to participate but to everybody who made the top cut congratulations if i said anything negative about your team uh i'm sorry <laughs> but uh we do have, you know, a lot of very interesting things we've not seen so far, which I think is really, really cool because, you know, you start to see metas heading in a certain direction and seeing anything that, you know, diverges from that and gives you another idea about how to approach things is great. You know, diversity is what makes things, you know, amazing in this world. So I really enjoy the fact that we have a lot of teams that we've not seen before. And, you know, obviously, if you guys want to try this out, feel free to use these mods because they could be the ticket to your next win. Uh, and if we do get any rental codes or any, like, you know, team breakdowns from any of these players, we will probably post it in the description of this video or in a future episode. Um, so, you know, go ahead and take a look at that if we do. Otherwise, everybody, that has been uh, the recap here. Thank you all so much for being here. Again, if you do like this kind of content, please make sure that you give us a like and a subscribe because it helps more than you guys could possibly understand, especially with us, you know, growing every single day and having content every single day. It helps us become the premier channel that we are striving to be to give you guys all of the amazing Pokemon news as soon as it drops and all the other amazing Pokemon content that we put out. So again, thank you all for being here. Um, and, you know, go have fun, try out Series 10, and don't be afraid to experiment because there's so many cool things you can do. Just go out there and have fun. So everybody, I've been Blaine for Bridge 4 Games. Thank you all for being here, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Have a great day. Bye-bye.